Welcome to my 12 days of Easter. This is day nine, and this is the one you've been waiting for. You voted for it. It's the sourdough episode. this is not a cookery or a baking channel um, I'm kind of going out of my lane here although sourdough does feature in my longer episodes quite often so I thought the way in which we would do this is I will show you the process of making the sourdough but intersperse it with some bits in the garden because it is a glorious day today and there's some beautiful things coming up so we'll do the sourdough but we'll also have a nice wander around the garden and see some other things that are coming up now that we're in April so I need to head inside now because the sourdough is ready to go in the oven. We're going to send you back in time to not one night ago, but two nights ago when this whole process started. Well, we're in the kitchen because you asked for it. This is the sourdough episode. People have been asking me for this since I started, so it's finally come. So sourdough is a type of bread that only uses water, flour and salt and utilises the wild yeast in those ingredients to create a uh, fermentation process that gives you the lift um, that you have in bread that rise. So you need a starter and I'm not going to show you now, although it's very easy and I'll put a link in below. But once you've got a starter, then you've pretty much got a starter for life if you look after it and you can continue making bread from your starter um, as much as you please. And it has a lovely, mm, lovely yeasty smell to it. And I fed my starter last night. So that's the first step in making your sourdough is to feed your starter. And I feed my star starter by putting it onto a measuring scale and I put in some water and whatever grams of water I put in, I then match with the flour. And I use a combination of white and whole wheat flour. So although it might be spring, um, it's still pretty cold and uh, pretty cold in my house. So um, this took all night to get to the point in which it is ready. Now I don't make a fancy sourdough, I make an eating sourdough. So if you're expecting something with enormous holes in, um, then I leave that to the Instagrammers. I wanna make a loaf that is good eating. So um, the recipe that I use or the method that I use is by Elaine Body. And my method is slightly different to hers, but my measurements are all the same. So I start with 50 grams of starter. And you know you've got a good starter when it's really thick and uh, gloopy. Okay, so that's 50 grams. And then I need water. So I add 350 grams of water then. And then I just stir my starter into the water to distribute it a little bit. And that makes it easier to mix into the flour. At this point, you can add your salt and you want one level teaspoon of salt. I'm using pink Himalayan salt, but you can use any kind of nice salt. And then that gets mixed in. So I'm going to do a kind of 50-50 loaf. So I've got um, wholemeal here. So I'm going to put 200 grams of wholemeal in, roughly. And then the rest white. And you're making up to 500 grams of flour. And then you just need to stir all that together. And that is the first stage done. Okay, so once you're happy, everything is fully mixed. You can pop a lid on it. And uh, that is gonna go in the warmest place in my house, which is on top of the propagator in the window. So I'm gonna pop it there. You don't want a direct heat on it. It, will, it just needs air temperature, but it is pretty cold in my house. So that's where I'm gonna pop it. And we're gonna come back in about an hour and a half. So out we come into the garden on this lovely morning and let's have a look at what we've got. What do I want to show you first? Well, to be honest, this is the main reason that I decided to do this because I wanted to show you this tulip. Oh my goodness. How gorgeous is that? Now, I think this is a brownie tulip. Um, it's a last year's tulip, so it's been replanted, but it's got a lovely long stem on it, so it's done really well. And I'm hoping that these and these ones here are all going to be brownies too, because it is absolutely my favourite tulip. Gorgeous. Just gorgeous. While we're in this border, the other thing that I noticed is the Alstromera is coming back. 
I'm so pleased. I thought it died, but there it is. I think this is called um, Indian Summer. Now this will be one that probably divides opinion. See what you think. This is Honesty. And last year it grew, but I got no flowers. But this year it started flowering. Now those people grow Honesty less for the flowers and more for the seed heads, which are very beautiful and can be used in decorations. But actually I think it's nice to have that colour at this time of year and it spreads, you know, it's a good ground cover, it's good for the insects. It spreads. And another flower is the ranunculus that I showed you a few weeks ago that has just overwintered and appeared in this border. And it's still doing really strong and it looks like there is a bud coming. I can't wait. I wonder which one it is. Always love to see the hostas coming back up as well. Got some new ones to put in. So we're about an hour and a half later and it doesn't look much different. But now is the time to do the first folds. Now I don't actually do folds and this is where I differ. Um, I start by doing a few folds. This just gets the dough working. So you're just basically pulling up one side of the dough and bringing it over to the other side like that. But then I like to do, I think it's called the ribald method. So you tip your bowl onto the side, you grab your dough and then you whack it basically. But you're trying to whack it in such a way as that you're folding it over. It's not the easiest thing to do, but it's a good little workout. Now, the other thing I need to do at this point is get my wild garlic in. So I've chopped it all up. It's just gonna go into the dough. And then this, this ribeye method, just chucking it about in the bowl, will work the wild garlic in. And all over the place. So that's made a nice ball of dough now. And um, I can put the lid back on, pop it back in its warm spot, and we'll come back in another hour. Right, I'm gonna resist showing you the hellebores again and move into the veg patch. So in this bed, we have parsley or cutting celery. I'm not sure which and possibly both. Let's have a try. Celery, that's definitely celery. Now in this bed, this is definitely parsley. Okay. And we've got curly leaf parsley as well in here and a little bit of lamb's lettuce. Now you might be wondering why in these beds and there are tulips randomly love those ones so pretty um, the reason is this whole expanse of lawn in front of the two larger beds I put um, tulips all sorts of bulbs in tulips and daffodils uh, it had lots of ami magus uh, before I put these raised beds in and um, although I could have dug them out um, they were under a lawn by that point and uh, so they just crop up they just crop up this rose look has buds buds now this is the garlic bed also with a tulip and a daffodil and that's been part of the problem in this bed is because uh, the foliage particularly of the daffodils looks very similar to the garlic but um, by the time the garlic are ready the daffodils will be well over and I'll know which is which so this has got elephant garlic in and regular garlic as well as strawberries and then this is the bed that I direct sowed the beetroot and spinach into. If we just have a look underneath, we can see that nothing has happened. <laughs> Not yet, anyway. Um, and those are just uh, more daffodils under here, but unfortunately they're under the cloche, so we're not enjoying those ones. The apple tree is budding. Got two apples off this young tree last year. This tree is... Um, Oh, <laughs> we still have the label on it. Sunset, that's right. Sunset and then the cherry, which is this side. Loads and loads of buds. And it goes all the way up there now. <laughs> they grew a lot last year. Two tall beds, parsnips in this one, carrots in this one. Nothing to show as of yet. And of course the garlic is around the carrots there to 
help protect them from the carrot root fly. And then the bed that we did just yesterday, got the lettuce in, the peas, taught and kale, garlic, and no winter radish anymore. <laughs> and the final raised bed has more garlic. Ah, look at that. And there's a nasturtium in there as well. This is the bed that had a lot of self-seeded nasturtium in last year. So, um, so that's garlic there. We've got a kale that needs to come out. <laughs> More cutting celery. And then those are my baby, baby leeks. Oh, poor little leeks. It's a very shady spot of the garden here. I don't know if leeks were the best thing to have in there. Perhaps brassicas this year. An hour later and it's a lot more elastic now so you can fold it over quite easily and it makes a nice smooth ball when you're finished. And back on the propagator for another hour and we're going to do that twice more. Now the final set of folds and after this set it then just proves for as long as it needs but probably about eight hours thank you for watching i'll see you tomorrow for day 10. <laughs>